first started playing when I joined um, UWIC uh, team, the University of Wales Institute Cardiff, which are quite well known for rugby in Wales. I think most of the girls who play in the Welsh rugby team went to UWIC, to university. Um, I'd always done judo from a young age and I could run quite fast, so I picked it up quite naturally. And within a couple of seasons, I was in the Welsh squad and had my first cap in 1996. It's completely changed from when I first started playing. Um, I remember when I had my first cap, uh, we had a few training sessions. Uh, you'd have to pay for your shirt if you wanted to keep your shirt. Uh, we didn't have any kit or anything. Um, but now, women's rugby, apart from not being paid to play, it's very professional. We train together as a squad every weekend, every Wednesday evening. There's paid coaches, fitness coaches, physios. So it's completely different to when I first started playing and the standard and the quality of rugby played now is completely different to when I first started. I work as a medical rep for a pharmaceutical company called Pfizer, one of the biggest companies in the world. Um, I promote the drug for rheumatoid arthritis, so my day-to-day -day job is travelling around the hospitals in South Wales, uh, calling on rheumatology consultants and rheumatology nurses and talking about my, my product, my drug. Um, I, I look at my time in the car driving as my rest time. <laughs> it's probably the only time I sit down all day is when I'm driving. and. Um, it is, it's difficult to balance everything, but I think when you're a female athlete, that it's very difficult because you know, we're not professional. So all the girls, whether they're teachers, um, whether they're reps, whether they're doctors, everyone has to fit their training in um, around their sport. And that's the nature of being a woman in sport. If, I think if I was a man, I'd be uh, worth millions. <laughs> I really enjoyed uh, my time with the wrestling. Um, I did judo from a very young age and it was my first love. I really loved it. Um, and wrestling I'm enjoying even more. And the aim is, long term goal, is to get to the 2012 Olympics. Um, after the Rugby World Cup I'll see how I do in Delhi and if I do well I might have to retire from rugby, who knows, and focus seriously on the wrestling if I want to get to 2012. But that, that's, that's um, a highlight of anybody's career is to get to the Olympic Games, especially in London, so that's my ultimate goal. I used to do judo nearly every day of the week. I was obsessed by it. Uh, acrobatics was my first sport and gymnastics, and I got a little bit too big for that. So the fact that I was flexible and agile helped with the judo. And from day one, I just loved fighting people and loved the contact side of it. Um, so when I started playing rugby, it really helped with my tackling. I was known as the last line of defence at pullback, and I was known for dump tackling people. from the moment I picked up a ball and I was fast and agile, I loved the contact uh, side of it and obviously it's everybody's ambition to play for their country. Um, I didn't think I'd last 15 years, no, but I think when you're young you don't really look to, towards the end of your career and look ahead. I was just enjoying the moment and uh, enjoying playing for my country. It's going to be a massive challenge for us. Um, New Zealand obviously are world champions, they've won the last three World Cups. Australia, they are the women's world sevens champions. And South Africa are a growing nation. Um, it's, it's going to be brilliant for us to play against these Southern Hemisphere sides because most of the girls have never played against them before. The squad is a lot stronger now. We do have that strength and depth that perhaps we didn't have in the Six Nations. All the girls are back from injury. Some new fresh blood in the squad from the under 20s team. So hopefully if we all stay fit and well, um, we can get some good results and hopefully uh, win, our, win our group. <laughs>